Hey everyone, today I want to talk about my personal experience with Future Motion one wheel repairs. I actually haven't sent a board back to them in over four years for repairs, so why am I bringing it up now? Well, it's pretty relevant to what everyone's talking about with the right to repair and it's the reason why when I hear Future Motion say that we're not allowed to repair our own boards because only their technicians are qualified to do it I just go <laughs> ah, you're so full of shit so the story begins uh, August of 2017 I got my first one wheel, but I didn't just get one of them like a normal person. I actually became a one wheel dealer. I owned a bike shop in Brooklyn at the time. So I didn't have a personal board, but within about two days of riding, the shop demo board uh, started coming home with me every night and I stopped commuting by bicycle for a while. Well, a few weeks later, my I noticed a little rattling uh, from under my front foot pad and my headlights started flickering. Now, if you've seen one wheel videos throughout the years, you may have seen some headlights flickering whilst uh, the taillights stay totally uh, solid. And you also may have noticed that on some group rides, you see a lot more red lights or taillights than you do headlights. And after a few more weeks, my front headlight went out entirely. And uh, within two months of, of having the one wheel, um, the board uh, just completely bricked, completely stopped working. So I sent it back to Future Motion. They said that um, there was user damage to the controller box and they had to replace the controller box and they were gonna charge me 200 bucks for a new controller box. And I was a little bit bummed at the time because I was disappointed with the durability of, of it because it had been advertised as being built like a tank. Um, I know you see me doing a lot of crazy stunts on my one wheel, but uh, as I mentioned, this was the first and last time that I sent a board to Future Motion for repairs. After that, I went over four, almost four years without needing to repair my board at all, except for the ferrite ring issue that I'm about to get to. Here's where it starts to get bad. So after they replaced the controller box and sent it back to me, uh, a few weeks later, it started rattling again, the headlights started flickering again, and I started to think that maybe this was an underlying uh, issue in the board and uh, not uh, user damage. So what I did was I took the controller box apart myself voiding the warranty, but at this point I figured the warranty uh, really wasn't worth that much. Anyway, so I opened it up and what I found inside was a heavy piece of metal uh, or ferrite, I think it's metal. Uh, there's a heavy ferrite ring wrapped around the headlight wires. Uh, and this heavy ferrite ring wasn't secured inside the controller box to anything at all. It was just free to rattle around and bump around. And after going over enough bumps, the, oh, here we go. After going over enough, ugh, after going in over enough bumps, this ring would dislodge and it would start to fray the headlight wires and cause them to flicker. And if you didn't do anything about it, eventually it would rip the headlight wires completely out and you'd have no headlights. And at that point, the ring would just be free to bounce around and break other components in your controller box. So I emailed them and I said, hey, you told me this was uh, user damage. You told me that I broke my controller box and it'd be, $200 to replace it, but you replaced it with a controller box that had the same underlying issue. And I actually fixed it myself for free. So why are you charging people 
to fix something that is just like a, a design flaw and why, like why aren't you actually fixing it <laughs> second of all and the response that I got was oh actually uh, you, you shouldn't be taking apart your one wheel because future motion technicians are the only people qualified to disassemble the boards and work on them. Uh, so please don't do that. If, if you continue to do that, it could hinder our relationship. Oh wait, did I say that's where it got bad? <laughs> I'm sorry. Here's where it gets bad. So fast forward uh, six to eight months. Uh, it's June 2018. I'm at Race for the Rail. Oh. Um, I talked to Julian. I'm talking to Julian, the head technician at Future Motion, and he admits to me that this ferrite ring has been an issue in every single board that had been produced at that time. So every single V1, every single One Wheel Plus, this was when the XR first was being released. Uh, he said that the initial run of XRs also had this problem, but that they were working on a solution and that a solution would be in effect very, very soon. That's one reason why I always avoid the first batch of the new boards. You know, if you want to be the first one to have the brand new technology, that, you know, that's great, but you know, just more likely to have some issues with the first run. Anyways, he admitted that it was a flaw in all the boards. He said it wasn't even something they wanted in the boards. It wasn't part of their design, but when they were about to release the one wheel, um, the FCC required that they install these ferrite rings because uh, of interference. Um, I, I've honestly, every all the boards that I have, I've just taken the ferrite ring out um, there are zero issues. I know a lot of people who remove the ferrite rings. Um, I understand that they're required to have them because of some government, whatever. You know, th this is an excuse that would work for the Kickstarter. Oh, we're so, you know, we're just rushing these out and we have to put this ferrite ring in it. Um, but then after four years, they became aware that this was a big problem. And the solution, in the, the second or third, whatever, batch of XRs, the solution was just to put a little tiny sponge on, like not even glue it or, or really secure it, but just put a little tiny sponge ag against the edge of the controller box in the ferrite ring. It, it was like barely a solution. It helped a little bit. You know, basically when I would get a new Plus or XR, um, I would, I would, ride it just to make sure that there were no issues with the battery because that is something that you would definitely want to get uh, serviced under warranty if there were bad cells in the battery but as soon as I started hearing a little bit of a rattle I would take that ferrite ring out um, there were lots of different solutions some of my friends would hot glue the ferrite ring to the edge of their controller box. Um, I knew people <laughs> that would literally take a brand new one wheel out of the box and remove their ferrite rings. Um, I know someone who got a really bad rattle uh, within uh, five miles of owning a one wheel. Um, so it was a big problem. So the reason I'm bringing this up is just to highlight how Future Motion has dealt with QC issues in the past, um, instead of admitting problems and correcting them, they have blamed their customers and charged the customers uh, money even when the boards are still under warranty. It also shows that the future motion technicians are not that great when they couldn't figure out a real solution to a problem that had some pretty simple solutions that people were doing on their own boards themselves for free just highlights the fact that they will deny that there are problems with their product. Anyways, uh, 
overall, like the one wheel is a great product. It's very durable. Uh, there's, you know, some first batch, batch issues with the GT, but overall the Pint, Pint X and GT have not had any ferrite, loose ferrite rings as far as I'm aware. Um, maybe some of you repair shop guys, if you could let me know in the comments. Um, so overall it is a great product. It's just that when there are flaws, they will straight up lie about it. Uh, and like I said, this was that was the first and last time I sent the board to Future Motion. I went a very long time without needing any repairs on my board, despite riding pretty hard, as you can see in my videos. And all of this highlights what a bad practice it is to only have one repair center in the entire world and expect everybody to ship their board back to that repair center. Uh, I get that they want to keep all the repair profits for themselves. I get that they want to keep all of the information about the repairs a secret and in their hands and not in the hands of third-party repair shops. Um, but does that mean it's a good practice? No. You think about someone in Europe or Asia needing to swap out their tire and having to send the board back to California, pay, I don't know, a few hundred dollars in round trip shipping. It's, it's just not a good solution. So yeah, I hope that Future Motion embraces the third party, not just for aftermarket mods and accessories, but also for repairs. It just makes a lot of sense. It's tough for the customer. Uh, it's just, it's just not good for the customer if there's only one service center in the world. Anyways, this was just my personal experience. Uh, as far as <laughs> bad experiences with Future Motion, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I've heard stories of them straight up stealing parts. Uh, you know, you send a board back with third-party accessories on them they'll take those parts off and throw them out so yeah if you, if you guys have any any stories you know drop them in the comments below yeah if you have any suggestions about how they can improve I'd like to hear that because I realize I have been doing a lot of complaining in this video without that much you know I've been doing a lot of diagnosis and not a lot of prognosis so yeah love to hear from you guys Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully in the future, uh, the one wheel repair situation will get better, but I think we need to do a little bit to fight for it. Definitely wanna thank Lewis Rothman for bringing this the, to the attention of so many people. I love watching the videos because he gets so pissed and he's never even dealt with future motion. And it's just so satisfying to watch because we've been getting screwed over for years. <laughs> and uh, it's just great to watch how, how, uh, how pissed off he gets about it. Um, Till next time.